So I recently posted a video about some center channel stuff. And as I was doing that, I started thinking a little bit more about just the fold downs for Atmos overall. So today I want to show you some things with the fold downs and kind of how they work because I think it could be helpful information for you when you are mixing in Atmos, can give you some things to think about. First of all, should the fold down even matter to you? In other words, should we just mix in Atmos in our 714 or 914, 916, whatever format we have in our studio? Should we just focus on that? Or should we also think about and listen to the fold downs? And by the fold downs, I'm meaning taking our Atmos mix that we mixed on, you know, a 714 system or a 914 or 916 or just, you know, whatever speaker configuration we had, taking that and listening back to it on a smaller speaker system. Should that even matter to us? Well, I think it depends. If you think that Atmos is only a headphone format and you would like to ignore all of the people with 5.1 or greater home theaters installed, if you want to ignore all of the sound bars that are out there and that keep getting sold, if you want to ignore the car audio that's out there now and that's coming in the near future, yeah, if you want to ignore all that stuff and just focus on headphones, then I wouldn't worry about the fold down. However, if you are optimistic like me that immersive audio and these object-based formats like Atmos, if you are optimistic like me that these are going to take over one day and it is going to become sort of a standard format, that means that people are probably going to be listening to Atmos mixes on setups that are less than and greater than sometimes uh, what we have in our studio. So in those cases, yeah, I think the fold down matters. For me, the fold down matters quite a bit because when I'm mixing music for artists, I want their music to work in the future. I want it to work today, and I want it to work in the future so that when somebody's listening down the line, it will fold down, and it'll fold down in a way that works and that maintains the mix. Let's look at some fold-down stuff. The first thing we need to think about when we're looking at down mixes and fold-downs is we need to look at the trims and down mix settings for the Dolby Atmos renderer. The actual Dolby renderer has a page for setting these up. If you are working with an internal renderer in a DAW, there should be somewhere in there that you can set them up. This is the trims and down mix controls in the actual renderer because I'm using the actual Dolby Atmos renderer application today. So a couple of things to look at first and foremost. Up here, up top, this 5.1 and 5.1x down mix. We have some different settings in here. Personally, I like the direct render with room balance. However, some of the labels, I can think of Universal Music Group in particular, they want it set at direct render. Now, that's also on a document that at this point in time is probably about a year and a half old. Uh, it hasn't been updated to my knowledge, but they're asking for direct render. So we're going to start by looking at direct render. Next, we want to look at the trims. And what this is going to do is this is going to affect what is happening with content that we put in our height channels, that we put in the side channels, and that we put in our rear channels as it folds down to different formats. So right now I have the 5.1 and 2.0 down mix. The 2.0 is basically, that is the stereo version of our Atmos mix. So the main spec that everybody gives is 
set the round to zero and the height to zero. So I've gone through and set that in all of these different trim settings. You got to set them all depending on which version of the renderer you have. There may be more or less options in here for the trims, but big one I want to look at today is the 5.1 and the 2.0. So the main issue when we are folding down or crashing down our mix to a smaller format is what happens with the stuff that is not in front of us. What happens to the stuff that's behind us? How is that going to end up in just a left and right? And how is the stuff that is overhead, how is that going to come down and into the left, right? So everything is going to be folding down towards the front. So what I have here is I have just a 1K test tone, um, feeding an object, the results that I got with object versus feeding the bed, they are effectively the same because as far as the renderer is concerned, the bed is just a bunch of objects with fixed points. So I have a test tone here and then I have meters up. This is a meter of the 5.1 re-render and then this is the stereo re-render. So what I want to demonstrate today or what I want to show you so that you can kind of start understanding what is going to happen to my mix when it folds down is I'm going to move this object. Right now it's panned to the front left. I'm just going to move it towards the rear. And I want you to watch what happens on these levels as I do. So, so we bring it back. So as I'm bringing this back, I can see this left surround is getting louder, but we're also getting louder in the stereo. So look at that again. If we go back to the front. And look what happens when we're right in the side. If I click on that to get right into the side speaker, we've got more level. So what that means is what we put in our side speakers is going to be louder in the stereo fold down, which is very interesting to me. Now, let me just remind you guys, the way this works is very dependent on how those trims and down mix settings are set up. So if we go back to these, watch what happens if I change this direct render to direct render with room balance. The 5.1 has completely changed. We've gone from having signal in the left and in the left surround to it all being in the left surround. Our level that was in the left side of the stereo, let's go back and look at how much that dropped. If I go to direct render, so we're at, you know, neg 18 there. If we go down to direct render with room balance, we're losing about 5 dB off of that. Very different. That's going to be a very different stereo mix. It's going to be a different 5-1 mix. So this is stuff that you have to think about and that you have to consider when we're getting into the fold downs. I need to talk about something I forgot to talk about, which is how does that stereo fold down work in the first place? And it's based on the trim and down mix settings that we have, which right now are set to L-O-R-O, -O, which stands for left only, right only. There's also an L-T-R-T, -T, which stands for left total, right total. That uses a little different way of folding things down, and I'm not going to get into today why we're using L-O-R-O -O and not L-T-R-T. -T. The thing with that L-O-R-O, -O, though, is 
it's kind of a known entity in terms of how it folds down. It's a really simple formula. We take the center channel down 3 dB and put that in the left and put it in the right. And then we take the left surround down 3 dB and put that in the left channel. And we take the right surround down 3 dB and put that in the right channel. So that's why we're seeing some of these levels the way they are. It's based on this L-O-R-O. So I hope that helps clarify some stuff. If you've got more questions about that, you can leave stuff in the comments. So let's get back to this though. So let's go back to direct render for a minute. Put that over there and let's see what happens as I bring this towards the rear speaker. So we're at full level now, so neg 20, which is what we were when we were in the front. If I go to the front, neg 20. If I go all the way to the back, full volume back there. In our stereo, though, we're down basically 3 dB from the front because we went, we were at neg 20. Now we're at neg 23. And just to look at those values again, if I'm in the front, in the stereo, we're at neg 20. In the side, we're at neg 18. So, well, neg 18.3. Basically, it's about a 5 dB jump. And then we're down at neg 23. Let's hop back over to these trims. What happens if we change to direct render with room balance? Nothing. So... Within these down mix controls, whether we're in direct render or direct render with room balance, it doesn't seem to affect the 5.1 or the stereo from a level standpoint. But those side speakers, that's a big difference. And I think that's why I prefer this direct render with room balance. I'm going to leave my settings here on the direct render with room balance because I'm not mixing right now anyways. I haven't been mixing for labels that require that setting. And direct render with room balance from listening to it in my studio, listening to the fold downs and from looking at what's actually happening with the levels in here, to me, this just seems like a better setting which is kind of the way they described it in the release notes when it was added into the renderer. So that's the version that I like. That's the one I'm going to stick with as long as I can. Now, let's just look at what happens with the height channel. So if I go back to the front left, take the height up, not seeing any level change. And just to make it a little easier for you to see. So if we go, no level change. This is in the, the front height, anywhere in there, nothing's changing. If I change it to direct render with room balance, changing that height does not seem to affect it. Let's go back to direct render. If we go all the way to the back of the room, still in direct render, what happens with the height doesn't seem to affect that at all. And a lot of this is probably due to these trim settings. Now, if I turn down the trims, now you can kind of start to see how does this affect things. If I set it into automatic, that's going to set the trims down at three. And you can see how that level comes down. But I'm going to leave it at manual right there. Let's try something though. So one of the other things we could play with in the trim controls is the kind of front to back balance from for the overheads and for for down here, which would be the listener plane. So I'm going to adjust the listener plane back a little bit and I'm going to try and get this level to come down from neg 18. So if I take it back, oops, a little too much. Oh. 
So right at about 75%, now I'm maintaining that neg 20 going from front to back. So now if I adjust it back towards the front, watch what happens with the levels. They're still kind of weird. If I go all the way to the back, no change. So all this is really doing is changing what's going on with content that is in our side speakers, basically, right at 90 degrees or so in the panning window, I should say. It's interesting to me that this doesn't level out quite right. You know, if I go back, go back to that, if we go back towards the front, yeah, it just comes up. It That's just a weird thing. I don't want, in my mixes, I don't want the content in the sides to be louder than the content that's in the front. A lot of times, I like putting things like guitars into there, like rhythm guitars and sometimes keyboards and things that kind of just sort of fill up the room. And that's going to kind of whack that balance out. But if I put it into that direct render with room balance, that's a much, that's a much better kind of thing. But, you know, even with this, you can still see as you pan from the front to the back, we're getting more level in there. So direct render with room balance is not perfect. If I pan it to 68 in the panner here, which is basically where the wides are in like a 916 or 914 configuration, again, this left, right, it kind of comes up and it's a little little off, no matter what trim settings I'm in. Right now, we're in direct render with room balance. If I go to direct render, the level isn't changing much in there. In fact, I think it went down a little bit, so maybe that's better. So there isn't really a perfect solution to this. I mean, for me personally, I kind of feel like I want everything in the right side and everything in the left side to just kind of be at the same level going into these fold downs. I want the ability to do that, but that's not the way the renderer works. Some of this and the way it folds down, I'm sure the Dolby guys, they've done testing, they've experimented with this over the years, and that's why this is the way it is. Some of it is based on more of a film approach to things and not necessarily music, which is, might be some of this. But even though like the levels here look a little strange, I've been having a lot of success over the last, I don't know, six months or so, using the 2.0 re-render as the stereo mix when I've been delivering stuff to clients. So, you know, you, you can't just go by what's in a meter. But I think sometimes the mixes that I've been doing, the reason I've been happy with the results is because the things that I'm putting into the rear speakers, these aren't generally mission critical things in the mix. So when they are down a little bit in the stereo, it kind of feels natural and it feels more like the way it feels when you are in the room listening to the Atmos. So that's just my experience with this. I'm sorry I can't really do audio examples with this, but we would really need like... 5.1 and stereo and sorry, YouTube, YouTube is only stereo. So do yourself a favor though. If you're working in Atmos, go play around with this, mess around with it in the studio, figure out what settings do you like 
don't be afraid to go in and tweak and adjust these things. I mean, if you've got specs from a label or an artist that you need to deliver things a certain way, by all means, I would say do what they're asking. But if you are just working for independent artists like I am, go adjust these, play around with them, figure out what works, because I'm really hopeful that someday this is what people who are still listening on a stereo system, this is the mix that they're going to hear. So I want that to fold down the best way I can get it to fold down. Anyways, what do you think? What do you like doing with your trim settings? Have you even touched the trim settings before? I urge you to play around and go check them out. If you've got questions, comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.